Uh, my name's Maggie Jo. Uh, I tweet at ZMag, and the code for this presentation is available at that GitHub link. So github.com slash ZMag, it's one of the repos. Uh, a brief shout out to Hacker School. This presentation is entirely cribbed from a presentation I did this summer at Hacker School, which is a three month writer's retreat for programmers of all skill levels. All of you should consider applying and going. Uh, okay. So here we go. So we have a 19 line Python multi threaded program. Pretty straightforward. So let's walk through and think about what's going on. So we have foo over there on the right hand side. Is it the right for you? Yeah. Foo on the right hand side, bar on the left hand side. And the only thing that's really interesting that's going on is that inside the foo thread, there's an inline import that causes bar to run. Right? So let's walk through this code. What do we think is going to happen when we run foo? Well, Let's look at it. So we do the inline import for bar before we print my name is foo. So we should expect my name is bar to happen before my name is foo. So let's run this and verify that that's what happens. Great. So I'm going to start. I'm just going to get off the mic so I can type and point at the same time. So that's exactly what we expected to have happen. My name is Bar, followed by my name is Foo. So let's try to make this a little bit more interesting and see what's actually happening in the import lock. So here, Foo on the right hand side is exactly the same as it was before. Bar on the left hand side now has its own inline import before it prints my name is Bar. So naively, when you look at this code, you might think, OK, it's going to do the exact same thing, except it's going to spin a little while while it tries to import URL lib, which is a library, which you're not even really using. So it's just going to take a little longer, and it's going to print out the same thing. So let's try to run this once again and see what actually happens. OK, so this is spinning. And it, we could literally sit here all night, and it would continue spinning. And so it looks like there's a deadlock going on somewhere. Uh, well, so luckily, I pre-wrote a piece of code with some comments. <laughs> so we can try to figure out what's going on. So what's interesting is that the Python import module exposes some very interesting introspection as to the import lock. You can check to see whether or not it's held, or acquire it, or release it, however you want. So here, before we go into the inline import for bar, we're just going to check to see, OK, is the import lock held? If it's already held, then we won't be able to call another import, because it's already held and we can't acquire the lock. So we're going to try to do that, and hopefully we'll see that we can acquire the lock uh, because that would follow the behavior we already saw. Same here over here with bar, except we should hopefully see that we can't acquire the lock now because we're currently inside the inline import for inside foo. So let's run this. Uh, oh, I have to kill this. Do do or not. Let's just run this. Uh, OK, great. So now, it's now as expected, as I just went over, inside foo, the import lock is acquirable. And inside bar, it's not acquirable because it's already being held by the recursive program. So uh, what are the takeaways from this? Well, first of all, I think it's pretty cool that Python lets you look and introspect into what's going on inside the import lock. Second of all, well, <laughs> turns out multi-threading with lock contention is kind of a pain. And third, don't use inline imports. Mm -hmm.